Spain has the fourth largest forested area in Europe, covering across approximately 18 million hectares, which is around 37% of the country's landmass. Spain is the second largest country in the European Union, situated on the Iberian Peninsula, bordering with Portugal to the west. Spain is approximately 50 million hectares, which is comparable to the state of California in size. Both Spain and California suffer with yearly forest fires, droughts, dwindling water resources, land degradation and desertification. Spain has been making some tremendous accomplishments with regards to reforestation. From the mid-19th century, Spain has tripled its forest cover. However, studies and data have confirmed the industrial tree plantations of non-native eucalyptus and pine that were planted for the paper-making industry are the most combustible tree species in Spain. Spain's forest fires have increased by a whopping 20% since 2011, and they are 15% more destructive, with approximately 10,000 hectares burned, and in 2019, Spain had its worst forest fire in 20 years. Average annual temperatures have also increased in the Iberian Peninsula in the past five decades, extending the length of summer and the number of heat wave days. According to an analysis of data from large number of meteorological stations in Spain, during the period between 1951 and 2002, a general decrease in the daily intensity of rainfall has been observed. All of these factors combined increase the probability and the rate at which fire spreads, creating megafires in Spain. These huge fires destroy the topsoil, causing erosion and ultimately desertification. However, Spain has been making some astonishing progress in forest fire management. Using low-cost and easy methods compared to most modern forest fire control and suppression methods, which require lots of manual labor, time and money. In this episode, we are going to show you how and why Spain is solving its forest fires, droughts and soil erosion, which in turn is improving soil regeneration and regreening desertified zones. So stick with us and let's dive right in. The Iberian Peninsula has an ancient agricultural history. They have been using an agroforestry system that is said to date back to the Bronze Age. The system is known as La Dehesa, where many useful trees are managed such as cork oaks, fruits and nut trees, as well as ancient crops such as sweet acorns. These acorns are traditionally ground down into a delicious flower. They are also food for livestock who forage between the trees, keeping the grassland trim. In these grasslands there is leaf litter, where edible mushrooms grow. In some of the low-lying areas, the land is turned for cultivation, with the trees still dotted in the fields. The natural watershed is taken advantage of, and water is captured in low-lying areas in ponds. Where the slopes become more steep, trees are kept more densely together, which stops erosion and is beneficial for capturing water. La Dehesa is said to be an ever-evolving and changing landscape, which spreads from Portugal in the west to Andalusia in the southeast of Spain. However, this holistic way of farming for generations has been under threat. In these modern times, there are less people who want to manage the land, and this region has become more susceptible to forest fires. Since the 1950s, there has been a huge depopulation event. Since the younger generation no longer want to work in rural farming and pastoralism, and instead move on to larger cities for work and access to facilities, which has left the vast landscape of rolling mountainous terrain to grow back and ultimately become a forest again. However, the reforestation isn't all positive, since it has increased the amount of devastating forest fires. This is because plants and trees are all the same age and size. They grow more densely together and dead wood and organic matter accumulate, which creates a perfect kindling for fire, allowing it to spread much further. Small control fires are part of a healthy ecosystem. There are seeds from certain species of plants and trees that are adapted to these conditions and need fire for seed dispersal. In a native virgin forest, these fires would naturally be managed better since the tree stands would be of various ages and sizes. They create space and shade with more leaf litter. These natural forest breaks reduce the level and intensity of fires. Also, controlled fires clear deadwood and create fertile grasslands for key stone species, 
such as wild European bison, who are considered ecosystem engineers. The bison once roamed all across Europe, managing the landscape. They were considered highly important and an essential part of life to our Paleolithic ancestors, who painted them on the Iberian caves, dating back as far as 36,000 years ago. Bison engineered the landscape by creating more biodiversity, by dispersing seeds in their fur and dung. The bison naturally maintained the forest by going about their everyday activities, such as grazing, trampling, and defecating. They do this on a massive scale, making them much more efficient at the job compared to humans with chainsaws. The bison are much more imbalanced with their natural surroundings compared to the domesticated livestock. The bison are much bigger and heavier, which allows them to carve corridors in the dense vegetation, and they are especially good at knocking down non-native vegetation. They prefer to consume the plants that happen to be the most fire-prone species, and they make space for pioneer plants, which are a much more hardy species, to grow back. All of these actions also benefit insects, birds, and other wildlife in the ecosystem. This is why bison are termed a keystone species. They help to define an ecosystem, and without them, the ecosystem can drastically change or cease to exist. Unfortunately, the bison were hunted almost to extinction, and in 1927, there were only 50 left in captivity. Thanks to various reintroduction programs, there are now around 8,500 European bison with 6,200 living free in the wild. In Spain, the bison have been extinct for so long now that they are no longer considered an indigenous species, so there is no state funding for bringing back the bison at this present time. Despite this, private landowners around the Iberian Peninsula have been relying on donations and help from international rewilding programs to reintroduce bison into enclosed national parks and private lands. In 2008, a veterinarian named Fernando Moran founded a centre to help reintroduce bison to several sites across the country. From an initial herd of 24, there are now 153 bison in Spain. In 2021, a thousand hectare reserve in Andalusia was established for studying the role of bison and wildfires. Mossy Earth, a social enterprise with a team of biologists and conservationists, are currently monitoring the project. If you are interested to stay up to date with the latest information on this rewilding project, please make sure to check out Mossy Earth's social media links in the description below. The rewilding of bison is an inspiring story, and the initiative is spreading all across Europe. This month, April 2022, the United Kingdom are also reintroducing bison to manage the forestscape, which England so desperately needs. This reintroduction of bison brings hope for a more biodiverse future, that will benefit our ecosystems that we humans rely on for survival. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to tap the like button. And if you're new here, consider subscribing with the notification bell on. Thanks for watching another video brought to you by Leaf of Life. We are a very small team of two people dedicated to sharing educational and inspirational stories about sustainable and regenerative projects and solutions. If you wish to support our work so we can continue to make videos like this one, then make sure to check out our links in the description.